I'm Sarah from Ceramic Cafe, and we are very excited that your center gets to have a painting activity. We're just sorry that we can't be there this summer to help you facilitate it or run the activity for you. But hopefully, by going through this video, you'll have all the instructions that you need and understand the best way to go about it. If you have any questions, please give us a call. The phone number is 913-383-0222. Again, 913-383-0222, and we can answer any questions that might come up. You're going to get your supplies in a box similar to this. And I'm going to go through what you're going to get and a few things that you need to know. And then after that, I'll go through painting instructions that you will share with the kids. Um, when you get ready to set up for painting, you're going to give the kids all a big brush and a small brush and a paper towel. So every child gets a large brush, small brush, and a paper towel to get started painting. Also in your box are two grease pencils that look like this. And these are used for the name, the kid's name on the back or the bottom of the piece. Um, these will not burn off in the kiln. If you mistakenly put the kid's names on with regular pen or pencil, it won't be there after they're fired. So you need to make sure and use these special pencils for everybody's name on the bottom of the piece. We also need you to identify your center um, on your child's piece. So for instance, um, if you're, the school closest to us is uh, Corinth. If you were at Corinth, you would put a C on every kid's mug or plate um, at the top corner so that we know all the pieces with the C go to your center, okay? Um, also in this supply tub are some black detail bottles. We don't pass out black paint to the kids. They tend to just smear it everywhere and turn everything gray, especially younger kids. But these are available for doing some outlining or maybe adding a little detail or if a kid just needs a little bit of black to finish off their design. There are gonna be eight colors in your box. Um, these are the eight colors that are gonna be there. You'll have a photo of this to be able to reference what the colors look like. So I'm going to talk about how you're going to pass out colors to the kids. First of all, you do have um, reusable water bowls to use for the kids to share. Um, and if you're using this method, you are um, letting the kids share paints. We will put these uh, foil containers and lids in here. And you're going to take and fill the kids' paints up. We also have a sleeve of disposable souffle cups and the lids. Here I've taken eight of them and I put the lids on them. When you fill them, you are going to take and only put in a little bit of paint. Okay, you're going to fill it maybe a fourth of the way full. And the reason why you're going to do that is kids tend to put a brush in one color and then accidentally put it in another color without washing their brush and it messes up the paint. So if you want to have fresh paint between sessions, um, it's better to start with a small amount and get, then fill it as the kids need more paint rather than have one child be upset that another child stuck the pink paintbrush in the green paint, okay? So if you do that, and you fill all of them ahead of time, you can put the tops on them. You can put all eight containers in here and be ready to pass them out to your group of painters when they come in to paint. You can put the lid on, seal it down, and then you've got this ready to pass out to your uh, group of painters. This would be good for about five or six painters, and then you would have another set for another group of five or six painters. So that's how we expect you to set it up and prepare for painting. Now, I've, um, one other thing, your pottery is going to come boxed. Um, most boxes are of 24 items. And when you get the box, the plates come with cardboard dividers between them. And you want to make sure and keep those cardboard dividers, dividers so that you can put the plates back in 
the box without scratching the two plates together and to protect them once they've been painted. You let them dry a little bit and then you put them in one at a time, put in the cardboard, put in the next plate, and it will keep all the designs safe from being damaged in travel. If you have mugs, it's important to know that they come in these boxes also, but they're in here fairly tight. But what protects them is a plastic wrapper. And you want to keep these plastic wrappers, take them off, give the kids the mugs, and then when they have dried after painting, put them back in the plastic and put them back in the box. The plastic protects the paint from being scuffed off by the cardboard when you're putting them down in the box. So those are just a few things to remember, um, important, and we're excited that you're going to be painting. All right, now I'm going to move on and act like I'm talking to the kids and giving them the painting instructions. So you might want to start the video at this point with your kids or just listen to it yourself and then um, share the information with them. All right. We are so excited that you are going to paint today. I'm going to give you a little bit of instruction before you get started painting. First of all, it's important that you get your name on your piece with the black grease pencil that your staff passes out to you. You need to make sure every piece has a name on it and your center identification. Then you're going to have a choice of eight colors to paint with. These eight colors, you can see there's bright, nice colors to use for painting. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the colors, okay? They're going to be fire in the kiln and be shiny, but when you first paint with them, they're going to look kind of dull. When you paint, it's important to know that if you only put on one layer of paint, it's going to look more like watercolor. It's not going to be very bright when it comes out of the kiln. You're going to say, oh, I painted it and now it's not very colorful. If you want a nice bright color, you need to go over the colors more than once. You need to put on three layers of paint in order to make it really bright and colorful. The other thing about the colors is they're really a layer of glass, okay? In this case, we painted the yellow first and we put the bright red on top and the red is still crisp and the yellow is crisp. But over here, we painted the red first and then we put this lighter yellow on top of this red and it just didn't turn out very well. You can see it got kind of orange and it's not very bright and it, you wouldn't know that it was really yellow. The same thing happens if you put yellow on top of blue, it turns green. So just remember, start with your light colors first and add your dark designs on top, okay? Any part that you don't paint will stay white and still gets covered by clear shiny glaze. If you can look at this part right here where it has the writing, there is no white paint here. It is just the clear glaze making it shiny. So you can leave areas unpainted. You can paint the inside and the outside, the top and the back side of your pottery. Just make sure you don't paint over the part that's got your name, okay? All right, I've got one more surprise to show you. I call it my magic trick. Um, oh, and there's, I, I forgot one other thing too. First of all, when you get ready to paint, it is important that you follow these instructions. These paint brushes hold a whole lot of water. So when you get ready to, to paint, you're going to want to wash your brush out, make sure it's clean, and you're going to take your thumb and your finger and you are going to hold the paintbrush about an inch above the water bowl and you are going to squeeze that extra water out. Okay. Squeeze it good and hard and get all that extra water out. And then if there's any water left, you can dry it on the paper towel. If you leave all that water in the paint, I mean in the brush, and then you go to another color, you're going to thin the paint down and make it you know, like a watercolor and it won't be very colorful. You won't be happy. So make sure you wash your brush between colors and then when you wash it, use this trick of washing it in the water using your thumb and finger and squeezing that extra water out, okay? All right, now I'm gonna give you my special trick, okay? 
I am going to um, show you a special trick called scraffito, and it's an Italian word that means to etch. And this uh, paper plate, which would be your pottery, has already got a layer of yellow paint on it, and we have let it dry for a little bit. All right? I'm going to paint some red paint on top of it. Okay? Take my brush. That's clean because I washed it in the water and got all the extra water out. All right. So I'm going to paint this red paint on top. I'm going to set it down here. Hope you can see it. I'll lift it up in a minute if you can't. I am putting my red paint on top of my layer of yellow. Covering it really well. Notice I keep quite a bit of paint on my brush because if I let my brush get dried out, all it does is just drag the paint. This way I can really lay the paint on smooth. Okay? All right. I have red on top of the yellow and I'm going to get out a small paintbrush and I'm going to use the back end, not the brush end, I'm going to use the back end of the paintbrush and I am going to scratch out a design. Now it's a little awkward on my hand here, but if it was down on the table it would be easier, but I'm going to hold it up so you can show, I can show you. I can scratch like this and make zigzags, okay? My paint's still a little wet. Um, I could write, I love dad, okay? Or I can make other designs. As I said, my paint's a little wet. I should have let it dry a little bit, but I can go back over it. If I didn't scratch it out well the first time, I can go back until I can see it really well, okay? This is called Scraffito, and it's a way to do small, detailed designs. Because if you try and paint really small things with this paintbrush, it's really not as small as a pencil, and it's hard to paint little flowers, little people, or words. But using Scraffito is a great way to get some design on there. When you're thinking about how you paint your plate or your mug or your bowl, if you're all doing bowls, make big bowl designs. Do big stripes. Do big designs so that it's easy to paint and makes a statement. Don't try and do tiny, tiny little polka dots and designs, okay? You'll be much happier if you've got a bowl, fun design on your piece of pottery. We're sure sorry that we can't be there to help, but I know that you're gonna do an awesome job. I can't wait to see all the pottery when it comes back and all your creativity and all the ideas that you've come up with while you're painting. Thanks for painting pottery this summer. We appreciate it.